Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about balancing of V engines. So V engines are the type of engine where two connecting rods they run a common shaft or we can also say that in this the cylinders are grouped together at certain angle in such a way that they share a common shaft sorry a common crank and the common angles at which the cylinders they are grouped they are usually 45 degree 60 degree and 90 degree and these are quite different from the inline engines where the cylinders are placed in the straight line because by placing the cylinders at certain angle or by grouping them we are making the system actually compact we are reducing its dimensions and we are also reducing the weight because one crank is being shared by both the connecting rods. Now we will do the analysis of the primary and the secondary forces. That means the primary and secondary unbalanced forces because of the reciprocating parts in case of a V engine. If we look at the diagram properly, we will see that there is a common crank OA. And this crank is running or it is connected to two connecting rods AB1 and AB2. And at the end of these two connecting rods, there are two reciprocating paths or pistons which are denoted by B1 and B2. So let this be system 1 and let this be system 2. And we've arranged the system in such a way that the masses, the reciprocating masses are same for both the bodies. And the mass at the crank pin, that means at A, it is denoted by capital M and the crank is OA which is common. Now we know that the unbalanced forces produced because of the reciprocating parts it has got two factors the primary and the secondary forces. So primary forces basically M R omega square cos theta which we have already derived in earlier videos. So we will see the primary force along the line of stroke. So uh, if we say that a common a single slider crank mechanism this is the slider it will help you to visualize how the system is working and OA right so the primary force was acting along the line of action if this is going this way the inertia force the unbalanced force is acting in this direction right so the primary if this angle is theta the primary force is m r omega square cos theta so for the system one what is the angle which the crank makes with the line of stroke? If this angle hole is theta, I mean the angle which the crank is making with the x-axis, this angle is theta. And the angle between both the connecting rods, this is alpha and alpha. The angle of connecting rods and the angle of crank with x-axis is theta. So the primary force along the line of stroke, this line, it becomes what? m r omega square cos this angle is theta minus alpha so it is something like this that crank is this this angle is theta so for the line of stroke it becomes theta minus alpha right so the primary force along the x-axis will be what the cos factor of this angle alpha if the primary force is acting along this line and if this angle is alpha the force the primary force because of body one or because of the cylinder one will be m r omega square cos theta minus alpha cos alpha this is the cos factor right now similarly if we talk about the slider crank mechanism or if we talk about the second connecting rod the primary force along the line of axis that means this is m r omega square cos now see what is the angle crank is making with the at this particular stage it is making an angle this angle if this is the crank you see if this is the crank it is making the angle theta plus alpha this angle is alpha and the whole angle crank is theta so if you look at the triangle OAB2 so the angle whole angle which AOB2 is it's theta plus alpha right and if this is the force which is acting here so the force the primary force along the x-axis will be its cos factor so it will be m r omega square cos theta plus alpha into cos alpha that means there are two forces which are acting along the 
x axis 1 because of this uh, reciprocating part 1 and because of the reciprocating part 2. So, the total force it will get added up, right? So, we will add this force and this force, right? So, we can take mr omega square cos alpha common and we will be left with what cos theta minus alpha and cos theta plus alpha. So, we expand these trigonometric, uh, you know, expansions, it will be cos theta minus alpha is cos theta cos alpha plus sin theta sin alpha plus cos theta plus alpha is cos theta cos alpha minus sin theta sin alpha, right? So, these two factors, this is positive, this is negative, they get cancelled out. So, what we are left with? 2 mr omega square cos alpha and cos theta cos alpha. So, it becomes cos square alpha and cos theta. Now, similarly, if we do it for the z axis, if this is the primary force along the line of stroke, for z axis, it will be mr omega square cos theta minus alpha. This, it will be sine alpha. And for this, for the reciprocating part 2, if the force is acting along the line of action in this direction, it will be mr omega square cos theta plus alpha sin alpha. Now, you see along the x-axis or along the vertical axis, the both forces or the components of primary forces is in opposite direction. So, when we find the total primary force along z-axis, we actually subtract them. So, it becomes mr omega square cos theta minus alpha sin alpha minus m r omega square cos theta plus alpha sin alpha they because the, they are the vertical components both of them are sin alpha and we are already telling we have already assumed that the angle which the line of stroke of both the system makes with the x-axis is alpha therefore sin alpha is common for both the systems so it becomes m r omega square sin alpha what we are left with is cos theta minus alpha minus cos theta plus alpha. So, if we expand these trigonometric equations, it becomes cos theta cos alpha plus sin theta sin alpha minus cos theta cos alpha plus sin theta sin alpha. So, these two, they get cancelled out and we are left with 2 m r omega square. See, sin square alpha because one sin alpha was outside the bracket and one is we are getting from inside the bracket. So, it becomes sin square alpha sin theta. So, what we have found out? We have find out, found out the unbalanced primary force along the x-axis and the z-axis. So, what will be the resultant? It will be under root x square plus x component plus y square component or the z square component we are taking here. So, the two resultants will like under root and square of these two components. And whatever is the common factor we are getting, which is 2 mr omega square, we take it out from the uh, root and this is the resultant that we are getting in the system. So, we are getting the resultant unbalanced force because of these two unbalanced primary forces along the x and the z axis. And if we want to find the angle, what we do? We divide both the terms. So, 2 mr omega square, it gets cancelled out. We are left with this factor, which is sin square alpha sin theta upon cos square alpha cos theta. So, when we place the values, we also get the angle beta, which is the angle of this resultant unbalanced primary force. Now, to find the maximum condition for the resultant force, that means the condition when the resultant force is maximum, what we do? We actually differentiate the variable factors and we equate them equal to zero. So, differentiation of cos so, this value cos square alpha cos theta whole square plus sin square alpha sin theta whole square, it should be maximum. So, we differentiate it and we get this value and the resultant that we get is when theta is equal to 0. In that case, the resultant force, it comes out to be maximum. Right? We have talked about the primary forces and there are also the secondary forces which are acting, the secondary unbalanced force which is being created or which is acting on the reciprocating parts and we know the secondary force is mr omega square cos 2 theta upon omega square cos 2 theta upon n for the system where n is what it is the ratio of l upon r or the length of connecting rod upon the length of the crank or radius of the crank 
so similarly like we did for the uh, primary forces we'll do it for the secondary forces so secondary force along the line of stroke for the system one it is m r omega square upon n cos twice of what angle this angle this angle which is theta minus alpha right so the secondary force along the line of this x axis it will be m r omega square upon n cos 2 theta minus alpha cos alpha because this angle is what it is alpha so we'll take the cos factor similarly when we do it for the second connecting rod or the second reciprocating body same it is m r omega square upon n cos 2 this angle which is theta plus alpha right this angle so this is theta plus alpha and along the x-axis it becomes the cos factor which is cos alpha so the total primary force sorry total secondary force along the x-axis will be addition of these two right and we expand this two cos 2 theta minus alpha and cos 2 theta plus alpha this sign factor it gets cancelled out and we get this value which is 2 m r omega square upon n cos alpha cos 2 theta cos 2 alpha right and when like we did for the primary forces now we have to find the result the value along the z axis only then can we find the resultant secondary force so for z axis the same forces this force the vertical component which is sine alpha and the sine alpha now because the secondary force this sine alpha because of one reciprocating passes in this direction and for two it is in this direction so they get subtracted right so it becomes m r omega square upon n cos 2 theta minus alpha sine alpha minus m r omega square upon n cos 2 theta plus alpha sine alpha now we take the common factors out which is m r omega square upon n and we expand the uh, this trigonometric expansion which is cos 2 theta minus alpha and cos 2 theta plus alpha so these factors being like common in opposite signs they get cancelled out and what we are left with is this 2 m r omega square upon n sin alpha sin 2 theta sin 2 alpha right this is sin 2 theta so what will be the resultant it will be the x and the y component so we'll find the resultant of the secondary forces which is 2 m r omega square upon n under root cos alpha cos 2 theta cos 2 alpha whole square plus sin alpha sin 2 theta sin 2 alpha whole square and to find the angle which this resultant of secondary force makes with the x axis let's say this angle is beta dash so 10 will be sin upon cos so the sine factor upon the cos factor we place the values and we get the angle at which this resultant force is being applied and if this 2 alpha is 90 degree right that means if the angle between these two bodies is 90 degrees so alpha will be 45 degree and we place the value of alpha is 45 degree this is what we get which is root 2 m r omega square upon n sine 2 theta 